Welcome to Influential Visions. Here, we interview futuristic leaders who share their deep industry knowledge and business experience with you, ensuring you have your finger on the pulse and your eyes wide open. My name is Nathaniel Schooler, and I am your host today. Well, today I'm joined by Nicholas Babin, and Nicholas is a key opinion leader on digital transformation, and we're going to talk about the benefits of 5G technology and the usage in digital transformation, taking obviously into account the current pandemic that we're in. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you, Nat. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. So I think the first topic really, because I know you're big into e-health and it, and it fits really nicely into obviously the situation that we've got kind of going, going on at the moment. And, you know, you, you were talking a little bit before about telemedicine and re- remote operations. So what, where, where do we sort of start with, with e-health and this kind of stuff? So t- today, health is is uh, a big part of the health business, obviously, especially with the pandemic. Uh, we've seen today connected doctors and patients. That's something that we see every day, all around the world. Um, we have less doctors. We have areas of the world like Africa, whatever, who have absolutely no doctors, whatever. So we need to make sure that at least everybody is connected. That we have as of today. The road to five G. We'll see monitoring uh, and medication um, that uh, will be what we call e-care um, that that's on the road to uh, to 5g and 5g will see remote operations the use of robots making sure that you know for example a, a surgeon in london will be able to operate some guy in gambia uh, from for a very specific brain tumor i mean i've seen i've seen demos already and the robots used are so precise they're even more precise than the, the hand of the surgeon. In order to do that, you need bandwidth, you need speed, you need very low latency. And that's why 5G today is offering, with on top of it, a cost that's much, much less than what you can what we can have today with 4G. Right. So that's why e-health could be the biggest, well, one of the biggest benefit of uh, the 5G technology, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen some evidence of that actually with uh, with robots actually taking the the skin from a grape. Have you, did you see that one? A few yeah, years, I have seen that one. A yeah. few years ago, right? I mean, yeah. you know, and and I don't think really that people actually appreciate where we're where we're at right now. I mean, I was doing a bit of reading. You know, they seem to think that. Obviously, you've got a total cost of ownership, but you know I know you know a lot about that. But they were saying that it actually, in terms of how much it costs to run, it's like one tenth of 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 four G, right? Is that Absolutely. is that fair to say? That's very fair to say. Absolutely, total cost of ownership is the most important KPI today for operators, I mean suppliers, and and also infrastructure service provider. I mean, when an operator decides to launch five G, he's going to look at TCO, the total cost of ownership as the main thing because he needs to make sure to ensure that at least it's reduced and it's optimized and as as with every business today but with 5g it's even more possible than it used to be with 4g right right well that's 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 very good i mean there are there are lots of opportunities with certainly with e-health i mean you know with the current with the current situation right now i see a future whereby you know we're going to become a lot more connected to e-health we're gonna we're gonna have temperature sensors. They already have one you can put on the back of your iWatch, which yeah. connects with your iPhone. I haven't got one, but I've I've seen I've seen that actually. And so what that means is is that you'll be able to have your 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 medical history connected, which will be in the cloud, and then that will be um, through customs or through you know where your passport control is and all yeah. these kind of things, right? So if for example, you've got a temperature, you might arrive at the airport and you're not allowed in because you've got a temperature, right? right. And, and, and people are going to be a lot more careful in, in how they actually move from A to B as well, I think. I think you're right. This pandemic has shown something that, that we, had, we had anticipated, but we didn't know how to, 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 do, to make it happen. And I think that the pandemic is one thing that it, it forces everyone to do it, you know, 
for many, many years, I've traveled to Japan and was the only country that basically, when you land in Tokyo, Narita, they ask you the question, do you have a fever? And, you know, how do you know if you have a fever? <laughs> I mean, unless you're like very unwell, you know, if you have 38, 39 degree fever, sometimes you don't feel like it or you feel tired, you have a little bit of a headache, but you don't know if you have a fever. Well, now in, in China, they're using this. Uh, as you know, 5G with Huawei especially, uh, being so strong in, in China, they use the technology to ensure that everybody is screened. So obviously we can talk about the, 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 the risks because you know it's big brother multiplied by 100. I mean, do I really want somebody else to know that I have a fever? Well, when you travel, that, but that's a different subject. We can talk about it. That's, We're here to yes. talk about the, bit of the technology. Um, but you're absolutely right, you know, from, from now, and you'll be able, I mean, you were talking about watch. I have a, a, another type of watch, which is an Android watch, and, uh, and it can do EKG. So my, my uh, cardiolo cardiologist, wherever it is in the world, can check, you know, if I have a heart problem or whatever, the, the data can be transferred. Today is not the case because with 4G it's not possible, but 5G will allow that. So you have diabetes. You know, what, what can you do? Well, you don't have to go to hospital for diabetes where you can catch any other disease. And that's the case today. Yeah. Because today the hospitals are, are full of people um, with, with COVID-19, especially in France or in, in Europe, in France where I'm based. Um, I, I see that all the time. Well, I have a lot of friends who have diabetes and they have tools that, you know, will, you, you prick yourself, you get a little a piece of blood. <laughs> the blood is analyzed at home the result is sent automatically to the doctor and the doctor can see you like you and I are doing right now. You could be my doctor and say, oh, Nicholas, your glycemia is really off the chart here. Uh, we need to change your, your uh, protocol. You change your protocol on the, uh, on the computer with 5G, because bandwidth is gonna be much larger. It can be sent automatically to my tool. It could be on my phone, could be on any type of device. And then automatically the level of insulin that will be given to my body will be optimized. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I don't want to call it a revolution because I, I don't think it is. I think it's a, it's a normal evolution, but we're, it's huge step compared to what we have today with 4G. That, that's why I'm so excited about it. Right. Well, also, I think, you know, when, when you think about personalized medicine as well and like how, how you can actually potentially test yourself at home for all sorts of things, yeah? And then that can get plugged in to the personalized medicine, which is specifically targeted for your your blood type, your your DNA. Um, and, and that's going to be, uh, you know, personalized to one person potentially right like that's amazing yeah absolutely today with algorithm with machine learning machine learning for example uh, part of of the ai uh, strategy um the more you use the tool the more it's going to get data and, and data coming from everywhere it could be data coming from your glycemia tool i'm talking again about the the the, uh, the insulin problem with for diabetes but it could be the tool coming from your watch you know, today I went running, um, so your workout, very important. Could be also, uh, you went shopping at the, at the supermarket, you scan your food, it's already in your phone, it gets that, that information. And all that information after, you know, we, we say at least uh, for some tools that I'm, 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 I'm very familiar with, we say after three months, the tool is personalized for, you know, Nicholas Babin. It's so unbelievable clever that he gets the data and then can predict data based on the historical information that he has gathered through a, a big data architecture. And that's why you're absolutely right. 5G and AI will, will allow um, some personalization in all type of, of, of things. So, so we're talking about e-health, we're talking about marketing, marketing, then with 5G, you'll be able to to have so much bandwidth that all the information that has been stored for a long time will allow stores to predict. And so you'll be able to consume better and more in a more optimized way, which will help also the planet. Because, you know, if, if we can predict that, if we could have predicted, for example, in this COVID-19 situation, that all the French around in France have had, uh, with the older um, toilet paper in an amount of like that's unbelievable i think you know you could have at least predicted it and you could have um, um stores could have at least have had to stock for it um it, it's 
5G and AI uh, is already combined because 5G is using AI with cloud um, technology in order to be more uh, efficient and, uh, and, and uh, to have more scalability. Uh, but 5G and AI in e-health, in agriculture, in uh, marketing, in all these type of, of businesses it is going to be something that uh, really the world will benefit from. Oh, very much so. I mean, I was, yeah, I think, you know, the next topic that we should talk about is certainly uh, the agriculture and food, food, obviously availability, right? Uh, yeah. There are loads and loads of, of people who are actually using um, drones to, to spray uh, crops uh, when they, when they, when they have sensors on the crops using the internet of things. Right. So, yeah. so they sense that it's dry in that particular part of the field. Absolutely. Or one leaf is is kind of uh, got a funny color. Uh, in Italy, I think they're doing this thing in the vineyards quite a bit. I was going to say in France, sorry, <laughs> but you're right in Italy as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have some good wine too. <laughs> well, I, I actually bought a delicious bottle of French wine the other day. Uh, it was a, a Bourgogne uh, wine, lovely Chardonnay. Region, but okay. <laughs> it, but it was no, it was. It, I know, I know. You're in Bordeaux, so what can I say? But it was a, it was a delicious one. But I thought I'm going to support the Italians as well, so I bought a bottle of Italian wine as well. Yeah. And I love, you know, I love the old world wines. Yeah, okay. as well. Yeah. But I think, but I think, in you know, in terms of predicting um, what foods are going to be needed. Um, what what pesticides they need, what fertilizers they need, what water they need yep. uh, to optimize the crops. Uh, it's it's a no brainer, right? Really, uh, absolutely. And to, you, I mean, you'll be able. I mean, farmers will be able to use robots. You know, what's really hard in a farming job, and my grandfather, my, my, my were, were in that, so I, I've seen them really work hard about it. Is is the fact that. These guys, they need to do a lot of things. And, uh, and the way it has worked and the way it's working even today is that in order to get rid of the weeds, they get chemical products all over. You know, obviously we all know about this. We need to wash them when they arrive, blah, blah, blah. When you use AI technology or uh, with 5G as well on your tractor, if you're a farmer, you'll be able, number one, for example, to have your tractor being optimized and making sure that using satellites and using GPS, the tractor knows exactly where to go. Uh, robots will be able to take care of the hard work then farmers will not have to do anymore. For example, get rid of the weeds and just spray the chemical products just for the weeds that are not good for the stuff you and I eat. And that's why IoT will come in as well because as you say, IoT, there'll be a sensor saying, this plant needs water, this one is okay, and this plant has, watch out, that there's, there's a mushroom coming into this one. So you'll need this type of chemical, but just at this spot. And the spot will be, you know, like GPS calculated. So the, for even like a weed. So, so you're going to see some things. And, and you'll, the guy will be in his tractor and the whole thing will be done using 5G. So, you know, obviously it's, it's a vision. It's, it's something that has started to, to happen. I've seen in some countries like Japan, for example, for rice, um, growing rice business, they, they're starting to use this technology. It, it's just unbelievable the things that we're going to see. And again, you know, it's not, we're not going to replace a human being. We're going to augment a human being because the human being will have information that today he doesn't have or he or she doesn't have, obviously. Uh, and that's why I really wanted to, to reinforce this idea of human augmented. And that's what the technology, 5G, AI, blockchain, all these new technology that we see more and more happening, especially in this pandemic. It's the first time really that we see the benefits of, five, of um, AI, sorry. For example, um, you can see that some algorithms are starting to calculate uh, where the pandemic is gonna go what type of, um, of vaccine is going to be more efficient for, uh, for COVID-19. All these things, it, it's, you know, I've been talking about digital transformation for years. And every time it was like, oh, yeah, guys, this will happen. And I, could, I remember customers saying, yeah, 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 wh whatever. And today, that's it. It is happening. We've been forced, you know, who, who is le leading digital transformation today? Is it the CEO, the CIO, the CTO, or COVID-19? It's, it's 
we've been pushed yeah but the thing yeah it's um it's amazing what you can do when your back's against the wall really i mean that's the that's the thing the 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 challenge is is that the preparations weren't really there in most cases many many cases unfortunately um but yeah i mean i think in terms of certainly food availability and food wastage I was I was I was reading something probably about three years ago that seemed to think that the food wastage was was going to drop by like twenty five percent. That's Correct. that's that's basically what uh, what I what I understood. So predicting demand, controlling controlling supply, um, you know, it, it, it's super exciting, and also tracking particular batches of of because yeah. Oracle have a really good have a really good. Um, uh, user case with a brewery that's actually using some blockchain based uh, technology thing. you've seen that one right yeah i've seen yeah. this one exactly yeah so it's tracking particular batches of beer so it means that it means that actually you know exactly where all those bottles went you know who sent them who you know etc and you can track that all the way back to the field because I think that's the most important thing, being able to have the full traceability instead of, oh, well, we know we made this beer on such and such a date, which is what the old, the old method was, but we don't know what actually went in that beer. We could, we could check the records, but we're not quite sure. But this gives us a lot more, doesn't it? It makes it a lot more accurate for product because control. Because blockchain right? is timestamp. So as you said, you know, not only you can track, traceability is the, 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 the key uh, element of blockchain, but on top of it, it's it's timestamp, so nobody can lie anymore. You know exactly where it comes from, where it has been, uh, when it was done, and and all the silos across all different um, technologies, activities, and all this are are open. So now it's like a flow of data coming from everywhere, going into a, a proper AI-based algorithm with machine learning, with you know all, all the different angles of AI. And you, you're absolutely right. We call that smart consumption. Why is it smart? Because it's going to predict exactly what you need. So you don't need anymore to throw away what you haven't consumed. Um, it's going to make sure that, for example, let's take a stupid example, but let's say that I eat ham within two days of having purchased it, right? So the, the, date, the limit of the ham of, um, uh, being good for me to consume you know, the shop will only give me the ham that is, is good for the next two days. So then I know that in three days, I need, if I want ham again, I need to go and buy ham again. That's what we call smart consumption. And smart consumption, as you say, we've been talking about it for years. And it's the first time that we now have the technology and the means, including 5G, to make it happen. Very much so. I think, I think the whole thing is quite, quite interesting because... You know, there are a lot of great, great things that actually can happen with 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 the data because we're, we're in essence, 5G is just a mechanism, right? It's it's it, it's it's a way of taking that data and using it. Right. Absolutely. Uh, OK, so it's speeding it up. But but also, you know, we're going to have a lot more kind of edge based storage of that of that data, which I think yeah. is quite interesting. So, you know, the computing power may actually be in your car on the side of the road. Yeah. You, you don't need to basically send that uh, up into the cloud to be, you know, analyzed with AI in the cloud. Ooh. It can be on chips because they're creating these next generation of chips, aren't they? I was reading something the other day. I think yeah. I think it was Intel that come up with some new kind of amazing chips, but a lot of companies are doing it right. But with the industrial internet of things yeah and and predictive maintenance of of machinery of elevators yeah for example right it, it's going to basically save the the companies a lot of money because it's going to mean that they pretty much know that that lift i was listening to a, a podcast uh, i think a couple of days back or uh, something quite recently about a lift and and it was like well there's 3000 man hours that that lift can go up and down before it needs someone to have a little look and and it and it's like you know don't think internet of things and, and industrial analysis of, of, of motors is new, right? What do you think they've been doing with aeroplanes? Yeah. Like, how do you think they understand like that an aeroplane needs a service? Yeah. Because they have a, a little, a little uh, sensor that listens to the sound of the engine. They know if a bearing makes a specific sound, right? So they need to replace it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's exactly it. I mean, sensors are all over an airplane and, and, you know, and very often I have people telling me, oh, one day we're not going to have any pilots on the plane. <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> Today, pilots are there, definitely, <laughs> and I don't want to scare anyone. But uh, frankly, they are so assisted by all the technology, they know anything and, and they can even predict when, when something is going to go wrong when they do maintenance of an aircraft today. It's, it's just un unbelievable. You can just question a sensor and see how the sensor reacts. It's almost like a ping. You know, you ping, you get a reply within a certain amount of time, and you know that, well, then maybe this time is a bit too slow compared to what the, the standard should be, and therefore you're going to replace the, the even if it's like a, a small nut, you know, nudge or, or whatever that needs, to, that needs to be replaced, it can be replaced. So you're absolutely right. Industrial IoT is, is today taking a, a step and, 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 and cloud computing is definitely there to stay for, for a long time anyway, because you're going to need to store and have the capability of um, expanding that storage you know, as you go. Uh, but you're right, the, the, the computing could be done in your car, could be done in, on your watch, could be done on your glasses. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of things. Facebook is now coming up with uh, AR glasses that can compute uh, all that type of information coming from uh, your website, coming from a game. You can see Sony with the PlayStation. They have already um, glasses that, that can interpret uh, the, the game. And so you, you feel like you're totally inside the game, for example. So yes, it, it is happening as we speak. And as you mentioned before, and you're absolutely right, 5G is just a mean of making you know, all this happen because it provides a, a, a bandwidth that's just so big that then all the improvement in technology that we've seen up until today is now going to, to be able to go through that bandwidth. And that, that's, that's, that's why it is. And, and to be frank, um, this technology could not exist without 5G and the 5G could not exist without that technology. So it's all interlinked. And that's what's absolutely brilliant is that we all came up together with all this, uh, all this improvement. Right, right. So what are you most excited about then? <laughs> A lot of things. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> me too. I, I, I don't, I, come on. Well, what do you I, think? I've, to be honest, I've been in this uh, industry with AI. Uh, I started the robotic division of Sony in 96. Um, so I've seen the beginning really of AI being used by uh, everyone. I remember being in, in Manchester once at uh, the big shopping center, the Trafford shopping center in Manchester and coming out with my robot and everybody would come you know, towards the robot and being like, oh, it's a robot. And some people say, oh, it's going to take my job one day, whatever. You know, and we were just at the beginning, real beginning. Ivo could understand 20 words at the beginning. It was just something. Now you have face recognition. You have robots, as we mentioned, that can operate, uh, obviously, with a, with a surgeon behind. But still, you have robots that can help agricultural. You have sensors that's so specific um, that they can tell if a, a, a leaf on a plant needs water. Uh, all these things, it's so exciting. Then you add blockchain behind it. So you, you have all this AI, uh, 5G, and then you add blockchain, and then the world becomes so small because all this information that, that's available today is used for the benefit of humans, for smarter consumption, for better healthcare, especially in areas where you know, today they have no healthcare. You know, we were very worried about COVID-19 in Africa. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of people have died uh, from COVID-19 in Africa. Well, very soon when the technology will be available, they'll be able to be cured by doctors in Europe, in the US, in Japan, whatever, because we, have, we still have doctors that, that, that will be able to do that. So I'm excited about, about the world we're in today. I'm very excited about the world we're in today because it, 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 has, it provides so much more than what we've seen up until now. I remember when 4G came out, I, as I mentioned before, I used to be with Sony, so Sony Ericsson also was part of my, of my uh, responsibility. And uh, you know, I, I saw the launch of 3G, and we thought, wow, 3G, unbelievable. Then 4G came, and 4G said, you'll be able to watch TV on your phone. You know, now we're laughing about it, but I don't know if you remember when 4G was launched, um, the first country where it was launched for me, at least in Europe, was, was UK. So I remember going to the UK just to check, to check 4G and see how we could watch TV on my phone. 
I had lived in Japan before, so I could watch TV on my phone in Japan. But in Europe, I had never done that. It was so exciting. And now it's like 4G. Yeah, it's great. It's and you know, most of us will not see the difference between 4G and 5G because the 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 speed when you download a movie or whatever, it's going to improve from you know um, 30, 40 milliseconds down to 20 or even sometimes one millisecond. But the the main thing with 5G is that all the data that will be created by IoT, by eHealth, by all these things, this is where we're really going to see the benefit for it. So it, it's it's an exciting time. Uh, I'm sure in three or four years time, you and I will talk again about 6G and we'll be like, you remember how excited we were when 5G came out? <laughs> but this, this as of today, this is what's, what, what gets me you know, going and what makes me get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm I'm really excited about the future of technology and 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 things like that. But it's like the 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 issues that people have is uh, are really around privacy, right? And you know, so so for example, um, uh, companies. I mean, we've been talking about health. So so insurance companies are going to turn around and say, well. Uh, we're not really sure we're going to offer you this premium because uh, you we know that you've been buying uh, 10 bottles of wine per week and we know that your pulse is is irregular yeah so so we're going to find that um we need to be much much more careful i think with where we're sharing our data i mean that's yeah. that that's a given yeah but yeah. but but we've also got sort of companies um like for example the telecom companies i was i was uh checking out something earlier and doing some thinking about it and it's like well i'm most excited about the 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 reduction in co2 yeah and it's like well how are you gonna how are you gonna take your employees data and then help them to reduce co2 yeah and we talked about this a little bit before the call yeah and I quite I quite like the idea that there could be someone who who might get to the office 10 minutes before you normally yeah and and he might like drive or she might like driving more than you do right yeah. so so and she might live around the corner but she actually le- leaves 10 minutes uh, earlier than you normally uh, and you could just uh, jump in her car and you're going to save your car mileage you're going to save carbon dioxide uh, so all of these things are going to be a lot more localized aren't they and but it but then it goes back to well how are you going to encourage your employees to say okay you can use my data and suggest these amazing things for me right i think covid19 is again the answer to that because we see the benefit to the planet this has done less airplanes less cars on the road people obviously i'm not saying that everybody needs to be indoor uh, or anything but we've seen already a blue sky in shanghai which these guys had not seen in in years mm-hmm. uh, we've seen um some fish coming back into uh, the the um, italy in um venice yep. um we've seen uh, here in france also some new birds coming some new species coming i mean you know nature is beautiful we've we've done a terrible job for many 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 years now and I think technology is helping us. It's really at the right time because technology is going to help us make sure that at least we reduce all these uh, CO2 um, emissions. Uh, and, and we've seen actually, I don't know if you, if you had a look, uh, they, they, they were showing the, um, uh, the CO2 level above the earth. And actually, it's, it's, it's like all coming back together. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I, mean, I was so excited when I saw that thing. Well, because we have so many, I mean, almost no, no plane uh, flying anymore. Um, and, and the aircrafts, I want to say, at least I know that Boeing has done a great job in reducing also the level of CO2 that airplanes are, are creating. But, you know, it's, it's still there. And so this transformation that we're living right now because of this virus um, is really going to help employees realize that they do need to change. They do need to work more from home you know, and that, that's why we see with companies. I, I, I used to have, a, well, I, have, I still have, a, <laughs> I hope I still have a French customer who was telling me, oh, I've, you know, my, my employees cannot work from home. That's just because the CEO just refused to do it. Yeah. I heard that today they're all at home, all working from home. Yeah, you know? well, they have to. They have to, absolutely. Um, and one, one point that you mentioned before that definitely needs to, needs to be worked on are the risks. You know the risks of new technology you always have risks i remember when at sony we launched a blu-ray the biggest risk 
And I remember the, the big boss at Sony, the CEO of Sony saying, well, the biggest trick we have is Blu-ray is gonna have porn movies on, on Blu-ray and we don't want Sony to be associated to porn. Obviously, every new technology brings risks. With, with 5G, you have interference risk. I mean, it's, 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 we know all the risks that we can find. Interference with weather and satellites because the spectrum of uh, 5G technology um, can, pre can have problems with weather and satellites. We have surveillance and a lot of people are worried about the fact that some foreign uh, governments uh, could use some data. And that's why in Europe, what they've done is even, you know, they, they realize that uh, at least some Chinese companies are well advanced uh, in terms of infrastructure. So they combine them with a European company. So very often you see Ericsson or Nokia combined with Huawei. In the US, it's a different story because uh, the Trump administration has some issues with, with Huawei. So obviously Huawei is not present at all in the US. Right. But you can, you, can, um, uh, you can reduce the risk by doing so because all the sensitive information that are in the software, in the, in the database, uh, 5G could be managed by European companies when the infrastructure of 5G could be managed by, for example, a Chinese company. Right. The health issues that you could think about you know, 4G, I don't know if you remember, everybody was talking about these brain tumors that were happening because of, uh, well, 5G has been thought, you know, the, the way 5G came was uh, knowing all this information was with, with 4G was like kind of surprised that nobody had anticipated that. So already that has been worked on. Security is a big issue because obviously, you know, with, with more bandwidth, people are saying it's going to be easier. Well, actually, with 5G is going to be different because you can slice information. Um, and therefore, when you said that information, for example, if you have very confidential information, you slice it and it's very hard for the for a hacker, for example, to, to, to ah. piece it together. See? And the last thing, the last risk that we see more and more is in terms of marketing for 5G, because a lot of companies are saying, well, you know, we're 5G enabled. It's, it was like, uh, it was like when we launched new TVs with Sony 4K uh, and uh, a lot of people said 4K enabled. Well, no, it's, you know, you're either 5G and you, you belong to the 3GPP uh, uh, format or you're not. And so a lot of people might get um, uh, uh, frustrated because they're saying, oh, yeah, I have a 5G phone because for, you know, anybody 5G enabled could be means 5G. Mm -hmm. So all these are the risks that, that, that you have today uh, with the 5G technology, but these risks have been thought through. Uh, and that's why I wanted to, to, to bounce back on what you said. You said. You're right. We don't want to have an insurance company saying, hang on, you have pre-existing conditions. I'm not going to cover you for this type of disease or this type of disease because now they will be able to know all this. So at this level, we need to, to make sure that at least we have rules that um, these things don't happen even though they will be available, but today, pretty much, you know, uh, Google knows everything about you. Google knows oh, yeah. <laughs> you do a search about a, uh, a, a drug on, online, uh, and then there, he will think, oh, well, he has high blood pressure, or he has diabetes, or whatever. And, and we see it in, in most countries in Europe, at least, I, and these are the countries I know the, the most. I know the U.S. as well, but the U.S. sometimes is, is, is different. Uh, but at least in Europe, we, we have very strict rules, uh, and these data cannot be used. Will they be one day? Again, if it's a political decision, you have that risk. But at least if we're all aware of that, we need to make sure that at least we don't, um, we don't make that happen. Right. I mean, I think certainly there are some there are some absolutely amazing, amazing uh, developments that are kind of uh, going on, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Where next? I mean, you know, where, 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 what, I mean, the way, okay, so I'm, I'm sort of referring to the definition of growth. Yeah. I'm referring to GDP. I'm referring to, um, how, how do we, um, maintain uh, a healthy environment for everybody in business whilst, GDP is not growing, yeah? yeah, and 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 actually, perhaps the, the term GDP needs to needs to drop. People need to actually turn around and have a different uh, uh, methodology for for different KPI. Yeah, a different a different KPI. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have some countries in the world. I think it's both on. It's a very small country next to China. Their main KPI are the um, 
inhabitant happiness in this country. The, that, that's really what the government is measured on. Not the growth of their, of their economy, but the happiness of people living in that country. You know, why can't we do that? Obviously, <laughs> I'm talking about digital transformation, that this time will be like a revolution. But you're right, you know, this year, we are not going to see any growth anywhere on the planet because yeah. of what's going on right now with, with, um, with uh, COVID-19. Does that mean we're all dead? No. No. That means we're, we're thinking about doing it differently. So yes, we're probably not going to have these massive bonuses anymore. Good for those who used to have them <laughs> um, or bad, whatever they want to see it. Uh, but that means that maybe we have a, a different quality of life. Maybe that means that we have a different work habit, which will later on, and I'm talking about 50, 100 years from now, we'll see growth again. But, you know, we need to reinvent ourselves. Our planet is not going to make it unless we reinvent ourselves. Yeah, yeah, very true. And, you know, and also tracing like the raw materials for like some of these chips. Yeah, for chip manufacturing, like, like. There are people in Africa who are digging these chips up, right? Um, no, not chips. They're digging, digging up stuff for batteries, aren't they? Yeah. That, that was what it was. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Lithium, lithium batteries. Lithium, that's it. And, yeah. and so, so I'm, I'm interested in what Oracle's like pioneering some tech in that space, actually. They, they've, got, they've got some sort of um, a company who's using their blockchain technology to, to trace uh, the the welfare of the uh, people who are you know mining the uh, the said items right yeah. so it's like well actually shouldn't we be doing that with all of the things that we're actually doing anyway yeah and that's that's why this world is is fascinating because you have all these startups that are starting to disrupt businesses so obviously we're talking about the big guys here they are called the huawei the ericsson of this world but uh, we also have very small companies that just exactly as you said, are starting to think, well, can we do something different? I mean, the, the, the quality of life of these people in Africa were going down, uh, walking down the, the, the mines to get the, the, the lithium and all the, all the other... Uh, kids. Yeah, exactly. Most, most of the time, kids or older people who can't live anymore. This needs to change. We cannot continue like this. You know, so again, I, I, I have lot of faith in um, in all the startups that we see today you know in all different crises that we've had throughout the years we've always had great companies that have come up from a crisis in japanese they have these um the two signs uh in uh, in kanji the first one it's it's called kiki and the first key is the the uh, the um, the problem the uh, the, the, the yeah the the, the 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 problem and the second key is actually the solution Mm -hmm. And and so what they're saying with this character, this kanji character, is for every problem you have a solution. And so it's it's really important. I love the Japanese culture for that because they always have they always spot on uh, about this. And the key key here is 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 exactly that 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 situation. We're in a crisis, definitely. We can't you know we we know it's a fact, yeah. uh, but something good is going to come out of it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think uh, it's a law, right? Like when when you create a problem, you create a solution at the same time. Like it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's it's like a. I can't remember who who actually said that. Is that like one of Newton's laws or something? I don't know. I need to check that. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think I think that. You know, really, the future can be bright. Um, yes, it's very difficult right now, um, but I think you know, if we if we just pull together, uh, we we have we have the potential to really come out of this in a really really healthy, happy place. Right Absolutely. after we've obviously got over the initial pain, yeah. yeah. But I mean, there are going to be companies that are going to be out of business yeah and they're also going to be companies who are going to limit the investment that they're putting into digital transformation yes. whilst this is happening and that's going to be a problem because the companies that are investing in in their transformation and becoming more data-led they are reaping the rewards right absolutely absolutely that, that's that that was that's been my point uh, with all my customers 
for for many years and uh today the ones that are ready are are really thanking me for that <laughs> yeah 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 i'm sure i'm sure well thank you nicholas that's been really really interesting to talk with thank you Nat. i loved it as well thank you <laughs> super thanks for listening please make sure you share this episode with your friends and business connections too and don't forget to drop us a review wherever you listen thank you